Here are a number of useful tips for PTE AV Studio. In both the slide list window and the timeline window, Control G hides and reveals the file tree. It gives us more space to view and select content from the file list. To bring the file list back, just hit Control G again. In the timeline window, whenever you're using video with sound, that sound is going to need editing. Let me demonstrate why by putting the cursor just before the start of this video and pressing play. You're going to hear it start very abruptly. And of course it would do exactly the same at the end. It would stop very abruptly. But the easy way around this is to select the video, right click and separate the audio from the video. Now I can just put audio key points in here and I can fade my soundtrack in and out and it's going to sound a hundred times better. A question I received just recently is what is the purpose of the time points tick box? Well, it's just the preference really. If I untick that box, you can see the blue flags along the timeline are removed. Now, I suppose the next question is, well, what purpose do they serve? What we can do with images in the timeline, if I was to select this image, for example, and I click and drag to the right. All of the images that follow that slide move with it and of course back again if I move it. But if I just pick up the blue flag, I can move just one image. In fact, I can move them and even change the running order. But even if I decide to untick the time points, I can still do exactly the same because I still have the opportunity to click and drag just as we did a few moments ago but if I just want to move one if I move my cursor over the front edge then I can just move one particular slide so the time points is just a preference now in the timeline window where we may have commentary or maybe sound effects but we can do this with any sound file we can link an audio comment to any slide or video so, for example, if I'd lined up the commentary you can see here with this particular image, I can select the image, go down to the sound comment, right click and I can link it to slide 3. It's even telling us what number it is. And there we get a visual reference. So as I'm putting my slideshow together, if I had the need to move this slide to the right, then the sound comment comes with it, even if I move it individually. Now that's going to be quite useful for commentary and sound effects, but as I say, useful for all sound files that we may use. Sometimes we may need to be much more delicate with our sound editing. To help that, we can make the sound files a lot wider. All we need to do is to go to the settings, preferences, and the timeline and there's the audio track height I believe if you use a mouse with a wheel I think the wheel will do this for you but if I OK that it's made it so wide that I need to lift this up to see it but you can see how it would make the positioning of the audio key points a lot more delicate to put it back we just go back to the same place and what I tend to do is to just over type it back to 100 and we're back to where we started. One other option we have which may help with the synchronization of images and slides to the soundtrack is if we hold the control key and touch F11 we can expand the timeline. So that would enable us to line up images to critical parts of the soundtrack if that's what we need to do. To bring this timeline back to a normal length, control F12. And I usually bring it back until all those little minute little 
markers between the seconds disappear and then we're more or less back to where we started. Now I'm going to have more of these tips coming up in future videos so if you haven't subscribed to the channel please give it some thought. I'll see you next time.